Hi, boys and girls. My name is Firefighter Bob. Whenever you see a big, loud fire truck rushing down the street, don't you always wonder where it's going? You probably also wonder what it'd be like to be on that truck, rushing off to help put out a fire. Well, in the next half hour, I'm going to tell you all about fire trucks and about what it's like to be a firefighter like me. Being a firefighter can be very exciting, but it can also be very dangerous. It takes years of study and practice to be able to do the job safely. Today, I want to show you some of the special equipment we use to do a safe job, like the big hoses we hook up to the pumper trucks and take up on high ladders to spray water on tall buildings. We'll also talk to some of my friends here at the firehouse, and they'll tell you what they do to help protect your house, your school, and community every day. By the time we're through, you'll not only know a lot about firefighting, you'll be amazed at the things you've seen. Are you ready to go? Let's get started. Well, if it isn't my good friends Tommy and Billy. Hey guys, would you like to see all the things that go on here today at the firehouse? You bet, firefighter Bob. What are we going to do first? Can we go up the big ladder? I want to ride on the fire truck. Can we do that now? Sorry guys, the trucks and ladders and all the equipment we use are very dangerous. Too dangerous for children to get close to, I'm afraid. We're going to have to watch everything from a safe distance today. You know, if you ever see a fire where fire trucks are working, you should always remember to stand back at a safe distance. You can still see everything that's going on. But today, we have to be just that safe, OK? OK, let's get going. Look, boys, there's Spot, the firehouse mascot. We'll meet Spot a little later after we look around the firehouse. The first thing that firefighters do every day is to attend roll call. Everyone in the fire company has to come to the meeting. During roll call, the officers go over important messages from the Central Fire Command, and the firefighters talk about equipment and procedures that can help them do their jobs better. Roll call begins when a group of firefighters start working a new tour of duty. Safety is the most important thing to talk about because they have to be prepared if there's an alarm. That's why some of the firefighters start checking the engine and the equipment right away, even during the meeting. Then everyone goes to work to make sure all the trucks are ready. First thing we do after roll call every morning is check all our tools and equipment. This is my hook for today and my compartment. I make sure that the hook is clean, free of splinters and cracks. We use this to pull ceilings to find fire. We also use it as a tool to guide ourselves in a dark, smoky area. So this is in good shape. Now I check my compartment. First thing I check is the tote weld. We use this to cut heavy gauge steel. We also use it car extrications, uh, guard rails and the like. This is oxygen and this is something called map gas which helps, uh, helps us cut. You can tell by the color of the cones and the flame that it's in good working order. I can shut it down. And I also have to check our first aid bag. We use this for heart attacks, car accidents, people that go in the river. You can see we have a lot of stuff, bandages, dressings, neck braces. Everything seems to be well stocked. Are they ready to go out yet? <laughs> no, not yet, Tommy. First, the firefighters have to make sure their tools and equipment are working perfectly. Well, let's talk with Firefighter Thor over there. He'll tell us about the uniforms the firefighters wear to help protect themselves and about some of the important tools they need to do their jobs. We're going to talk about some of the personal equipment that the firemen use. Um, first of all, we all wear special clothes in the firehouse that help protect us from, uh, from heat and fire. And we also wear these harnesses that we use uh, when we use ropes, in case we had to save ourselves from a fire or save somebody else from a fire, we can attach these harnesses to a rope and lower ourselves or lower someone else to safety. Uh, when an alarm comes in, um, I would first put on my radio. I would just put it around my neck like this and make sure it's turned on. And this allows me to communicate with the other firefighters that are working at the fire. Then I would put on my boots and I have a pair of brand new boots to put on today and we just slip our, our shoes off that we wear at the firehouse and we slip on the fire boots. And these boots are specially designed for firefighters. They have steel in the toe and underneath to help protect us from uh, walking on any nails or broken glass or anything like that. And they also pull up like this.
high up on our legs and this protects us from hot water and broken glass and nails and that sort of thing when we're crawling around inside of fire. Then I would put on my coat. It's a very big heavy coat made of very special material to help keep firefighters safe. And it snaps up like this. And it has these big yellow stripes on, and this helps, uh, these are reflective. And it helps to allow us to see each other in a fire, and if ever we should get hurt or trapped, it would help uh, other firefighters to find us. Then I would put my flashlight on, because it's very dark. Even in the daytime with all the smoke, it's very dark in the uh, fires. We'll make sure it works. Then I have my fire gloves. These are also special for, for firefighting. They help protect us from, from steam and water burns as well as from uh, touching anything that was hot or sharp. And then I would put on my helmet. And the helmet also has yellow stickers on it that, that reflect to help see each other. And it has a number, the number of our company, and that allows us to identify each other at fires. It also has eye shields that come down in front to help us uh, help protect our eyes. And it has a liner inside that comes down. These flaps come down to help protect our ears so our ears don't get burned. So we're pretty well protected. Then after we got to the fire, I would put my air mask on because there's a lot of very dangerous gases in fires. The gas and the smoke is very dangerous. It goes on like this. And it has a belt to go around my waist. And this is very heavy to carry, but it's the only thing that helps us breathe in a fire. And when we got close to the fire, I would turn it on, and it would make, it's gonna make a noise. And that lets me know that it's working. And that noise also lets me know if it starts to run out of air. If it starts to run out of air, it makes that noise and it tells me to get out. When we put it on, It has this net that goes over my head to help keep it in place. And I would I'd be kneeling down on the floor because it would be very hot and it would be cooler down here. And I would put it on. And then put my helmet back on. And that's what it would sound like inside a fire. I don't know if you can hear me now, but that's what it sounds like. And some people might think that's pretty scary, but that's what we have to do to when we come into a fire. So if you ever hear or see anybody like that, don't be afraid of them. They're a firefighter. That's what they look like. Whoa, where did everything go? <laughs> I can't see. These helmets are made for the firefighters, Tommy. Maybe when you get older, you'll decide to be one. When is everything happening? Are the trucks going out yet? Fire engines are always ready to go out, Billy, at a moment's notice. But there's still a lot more preparation involved. Every day, firefighters first have to make sure all their tools and equipment are inspected. Some of that equipment's kept on ladder trucks. Take a look. Hi, this part of the fire truck has a number of tools that saves a lot, a lot of lives. Up here we have what looks like a sled, but it's really called a Stokes. Looks like a sled, but we might use this, actually, if you're hurting a fire, to bring you out of a building. That's only in a very rare case, though. Now, now in here, this is where we have a lot of other fun stuff. This is called the Jaws of Life. This is the generator. This is what we actually use to start up the Jaws of Life. Now, this is a cutter. And as you'll see, this opens and closes so that we can cut, up a, cut open a car like it was a tin can. And this, this we use to spread open the car, also in order to get you out if you're in there, if you're in danger. Look, boys, the firefighters are checking their saws to make sure they're working properly. Sometimes in a fire, doors are locked and the firefighters have to cut through hard metal to get inside. The saw can help them get to people in trouble quickly and save lives. The firefighters have to start their saws every day. Now the firefighters are testing their ladders. See how quick they are? The ladder can help them climb up to a window to help someone. This portable ladder is called an extension ladder. Watch how the men run to set it up. 
The ladder's made of fire-resistant metal. It has a pulley that raises a second inside section. And once they lock that in place, presto, up they go. It takes very little space on the truck, but when it's extended, this tool becomes a long, sturdy ladder. Do they hook up the hoses to a fire hydrant? No, we get the water from a fire hydrant, but then we put it in a special truck called an engine or a pumper. Well, let's talk with Don, the engine driver, about how the pumper works. We call him the chauffeur. This is a, a, an engine pumper. This, what it does, it puts water on the fire, the basic, uh, that's the job of this apparatus. When we pull up to a, a fire or any kind, we would hook up to a fire hydrant and get water into the, inside the pumps through this here, including right here, four and a half inch uh, inlet. We would then hook up our hoses to the outlets. These here gates, you would pull them to let the water come out, to go through the hoses to the fire. The dials tell me how much water I'm getting from the pressure from the hydrant, how much pressure I'm putting out in each individual hose line that which I open up, where I have lines connected to. Well, we have, on this here stretch would be an inch and three quarter hose with two and a half inch also on it if we get that far into it. This would be basically used for a, a smaller fire, a one room, two room fire. That will be one of those first lines stretched. If it's a heavy volume of fire, they won't use that line. They'll only use that on a smaller fire. Otherwise, you use a two and a half inch line, which you would, you would get more water out of, which is the main thing. The more fire, the more water you want to put out onto it. And you would hook it up to each, either gate. You'd have the right fitting onto it. This is hooked up for the inch three quarter. would go onto this one down here. You see the smaller fitting there. So that would be for the smaller hose. This one's hooked up for a Siamese stretch to a, a large high-rise building. We would supply the Siamese outside in front of the building. You would see it's to use a larger hose because you want more water going into that hose. So use a three and a half inch hose for that. And that would go on to that. Back here in the back of the rig is our hose bed. We have inch three quarter, three and a half inch, and two and a half inch hose. The inch three quarter, you would take your folds, pull it out, and go to the back of the rig and step back and wait for the other members of the uh, team to pull off their lens that they may need for the fire. Then they would proceed to the fire building. Then the chauffeur and myself would break the line and hook it up to the side of the pumper and proceed to give them water as much as they needed, hopefully. This here is what they call a roller. These, the, the members bring inside to the build, a high-rise building, which I would hook up to the Siamese with the three and a half inch hose. This is used in, on the interior of that building because they can't bring this hose up 40 or 50 stories. So inside a high-rise building, there's outlets on each floor for them to hook up this hose. They'll bring in approximately three lengths to hook up on each individual floor, whatever they may need at that floor. The chauffeur also drives the truck. He's gonna show us how to work all the controls. My job is to drive this to a scene of a fire and put water on the fire with this apparatus. Now in getting there, I would have to first naturally start up the uh, vehicle and proceed. We would turn on all the lights, the emergency lights. They would all be going up on top and prepared to leave quarters. All the members would get on, we'd leave quarters with all the lights responding. In here we also have a uh, public address system to let people know that we're coming or to get out of the way. We have an air horn, which makes a lot of noise. You've probably heard in the streets when you've seen fire engines go by. We have sirens that make many different types of noises. We have many lights that'll flash on and off, so we are very colorful to coming down the block. Now, there is an officer normally sits on my right-hand side. He would be in control of the whole operation going to the fire. He takes charge of the lights, the air horn, all that stuff, because my main concern is driving there and getting there safely as quickly as possible. I know sometimes firefighters can spend hours just waiting around the firehouse. They're always ready to go, but they never quite know just exactly when somebody's going to call for help. It can be nice and quiet, and then suddenly... Oh, there's a well, there's an emergency now. Well, well, Somebody's called for help, and the firefighters are jumping into action. Let's go, guys. Oh, 
Whenever an alarm comes in, the firefighters have to respond. The faster they get there, the more chance that nothing gets out of control. Sometimes firefighters have to go into tall buildings to try and find the smoke before it turns into a big fire. Other times it's just a false alarm or a very small fire. But every time there's a call or an alarm, they still have to leave the firehouse, just in case it's an emergency. For some calls, the fire's already started and the firefighters have to work very hard and fast to put it out. Stay back, boys. Fighting the fire is very dangerous work and everyone has to keep behind the trucks to stay safe. Wow, look at those firemen put out that fire. See those hoses spraying water? Guys, one of the most important pieces of firefighting equipment is a ladder truck. It has a bucket that can spray water directly into a fire, and it can help save people that might be trapped inside a house or a building. And each ladder truck has a supervisor who makes sure everyone does their job. Lieutenant Kozlowski's in charge of this truck today. I'm the officer on duty in the ladder company today, also known as the truck company. Uh, most firehouses have two different kinds of apparatus. One of them is an engine. Uh, an engine is equipped with hoses, and it has its own pumps. Um, the pumps pump the water to the hose, and the hose puts the fire out. Our ladder company is a little different than that. Basically, in a nutshell, is we would do everything else but that. Uh, we bring the tools to the fire operation. Uh, some of the tools that we have on the truck you've already seen today. We have torches to uh, cut things open. We have hand tools to break things if necessary. We have um, hooks to pull things down. Uh, we have a tool called the Jaws of Life, which is used to help rescue people from car accidents. And we have this big piece of machinery right here known as a towel ladder. In fire departments, there are basically two different types of ladders. There's an aerial ladder, which is basically one big long ladder, and there's a tower ladder, which we have on the end of ours, a thing called a bucket. Now, the difference between an aerial ladder and the tower ladder, which we have, is the bucket can have people inside of it. We can use the bucket to put firefighters up where they're needed, or we could put the bucket up to get people if they need to be rescued and, br and brought them down. Um, one of the most versatile jobs that the towel ladder can do is, although we can't pump our own water, we need the engine to give us water, we can take this long ladder on top of the, on top of the truck and extend it up to 75 feet high and use it for what we call an outside stream, like a, a, a large outside hose stream to put out fires from the outside. When we arrive at a scene, the first job of the officer, myself, and the firefighter assigned to drive, who's known as the chauffeur, our, our initial job is to position the apparatus. Uh, once the apparatus itself is in position, the firefighter who's the chauffeur, assisted by one other member of the firefighter, usually the, uh, the man assigned to the outside vent position, they will come around and um, on all four corners of the, of the truck, two in the front and two in the very back, there are um, four stabilizers called jacks. The jacks actually come down out of, the, out of their supports, go down, and actually contact the ground and push the ladder up somewhat, push the whole apparatus up off the ground. There are also two large, what they call outriggers, which are positioned right there, a thing that looks like a big foot. And when uh, a, a, a switch is engaged, a hydraulic switch, that stabilizer will come down and also contact the ground and pick the ladder up off the ground. And the reason why it has to be done is the whole truck literally has to be off the ground by 
you know, a few inches to, to stabilize the whole, the, the whole apparatus so that you could use the bucket at, a, an, ele at an elevated height. the line down. The primary job of a ladder company is to save life. The primary job of the engine company is to put the fire out and our primary function is to save life. So either by firefighters on foot going in the building up the stairs and going to where the person is and rescuing him that way or by raising the ladder or the bucket, depending on the apparatus that's there, getting the ladder right to their position from the outside and removing them and bringing them down to safety. Uh, hopefully they feel, feel pretty good about us arriving because we, we can uh, rescue them and get them to a position of safety. I thought firefighters only put out fires. You mean they do other things too? Sure, firefighters can help people trapped in cars or anybody who needs emergency first aid. Sometimes there are accidents and firefighters are the first to arrive on the scene. Cities use their fire departments for many different jobs. Some of those tools we saw are used to help in emergencies that aren't fires. The lieutenant was just out on a call for a car accident. Let's talk to him about it. Okay, in this instance, we got an alarm for a car accident at Park Avenue South and 26th Street. The additional information on this alarm, they said there was possible smoke with the accident. So right now, just from that information, we're thinking we could have a car fire, we could have people trapped in a car. So they dispatched two companies to this. There's a truck and an engine. Both Ladder 7 and myself from an engine company, 16, we responded to the accident. We were at the uh, arrival on the scene. Police department was already there. There was indeed a car accident, two cars involved. A uh, minor injury to one person we found at the scene. Uh, turned out there was no smoke in this instant. It was just uh, coolant, antifreeze, so it was uh, more or less overheating. There was no, uh, no fuel leak at the scene, which is one of the things that we're going to be uh, concerned about. If there's a fuel leak, even if there's no fire, we've got to be concerned about a fuel leak because you've got a hot exhaust system at the time, and you could have a fire occurring at that point. Look, Firefighter Bob, there's Spot, the fire dog. What does he do around the firehouse? Well, Spot's a Dalmatian. Many firehouses keep Dalmatians as pets, and each dog has a person who's specially responsible for his care and training. We call that person the dog's keeper. Come on, Come on, Spot. Spot. Come here. Come on. Come on. Come on, boy. Good boy. Come on. Come on. Sit. Sit, dog. Sit. Sit. First, you have to sit. Sit. Yes. Good dog. Good dog. That's your treat. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down for another treat. Lay down for another treat. It's so quiet. Did all the firefighters go home? <laughs> no, Billy. We firefighters have to stay here all the way to the end of our shift. We stay right here at the firehouse. In fact, sometimes we even sleep here if we have an extra long shift that day. If there's time between calls, sometimes firefighters cook up big meals, and they really enjoy the time they spend together. But everyone has to do their share and help clean up. Firehouses are always very clean. Sometimes the firefighters watch training programs to educate themselves and help them do their jobs better. But no matter what they're doing, if that call comes in, they all have to get up and go right away. That was great, Firefighter Bob. We want to be firemen. What can we do? Well, you're both still a little young yet. But in a few years, who knows? We've learned a lot here today, but now it's time to say goodbye. Hey, look, here goes some of our firefighters off on another job. Let's watch it.